you know, which which they call lotion, Kodesh, you know, Lashawan Kodesh, which is the holy tongue, you know, and it's, and it's pure because it's not mixed in with no other language. Every other language out there is mixed with something, you know, but the, the, the our language is not mixed with anything else. All right. Uh, is, is that you have anything, Pastor Gabor? Yeah, now I want to I'm going to change uh, lanes or change gears, so to speak. This is from Hosea. 11 and 1, and then I'm going to go to Matthews 2, right? It says in Hosea, oh, by the way, Hosea is the word in the Hebrew, Hawashai, which means deliverer. Same name as our Savior, all right? That's why he was called Savior. But the only difference is there was a Yah a prefix to the word Hawashai. So you get the word Yahawashai. So the Messiah would be the the proper way of stating his name or saying his name is Yahawashai, which literally means he deliverer. And the angel Gabriel told his parents to name him. You're going to name him he deliverer for he shall save his people or he shall deliver his people from their sins. All right. Okay, it says Hosea 11 and 1 in the King James. It says, it says, when Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son. Who else was called the son of the Most High? Solomon. And ultimately, we were called in John 1, we were called sons of the Most High. All right? So he, he referred to Solomon, King Solomon, as his son. He didn't say that about David. He said that about King Solomon. He referred to Solomon talking to David through Nathan the prophet, my son, yeah. which is Yahweh Shai. All right? It says, when Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. So you got them comedic guys talking about, see that showing you that the, 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 the real Jesus came out of Egypt. Well, let's get an understanding of that. I don't know if I got the scripture. Did I bring the scripture out? Uh, I thought I had it. Say something. Right. Yeah, so, you know, that's why we're going through through this history, you know, so that you can uh, pretty much you can get it, you know, and uh, um, get the proper understanding because a lot of y'all ain't going to get it. Because you're going to fall asleep and you ain't going to, I don't you ain't saying nothing. And then you ask us, what does this mean, brother? Well, we, we went over it two years ago. Yeah. If you had watched the video, you would know, man. That's right. Scriptures speak about growing in this thing. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, lessons like this, you know, you, you do a lesson on the woman or you do a lesson on uh, uh, some controversy going uh, talking, you know, going after, you know, uh, um, doing a video on Polite or Sarnetta or or Nate, you no, know, or, or General Johanna, it'll get all kind of views and all kind of comments, you know. But then deep, serious lessons like this, it'll it'll get some some views, but it won't get as many views. And then you you see the comment board. The comment board is damn near desolate, you know, because a lot of you guys, you know, you just into entertainment, man. A lot of you guys don't want to think, man, you know. You, you, you don't want to check things out. Okay, this is Matthew. I read Hosea to come to, to, come to this. Matthew's 2.15, right? King James. And, and was there. You know what? Let me, let me, let me. Uh, all right. Matthew's 2.15. I want to jump up a verse. Say something. Yeah, you know, and you got to see, uh, there's a thing like we used to uh, call link-up scriptures. You know, you have a scripture in the Old Testament, and there was a link-up in the New Testament. And that's how you would link them up to know the, the, the history or know the, uh, the fulfillment of, 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 of prophecy in the New Testament. You know, so what Apostle Tar is reading now in the book of Hosea 11 is linked to uh, Matthew, the second chapter. You know, because that was uh, the fulfillment of it. Because... When when uh, uh, the, that's the reason why the angel told Joseph to go down into the land of Egypt, 
Because you had Israelites in the land of Egypt. You had Israelites in the land of Ham or so-called Africa. And you had uh, Israelites all d in different, different lands. But the, the Lord told him to go down there specifically because he said, I'm a I'll call my child out of Egypt. Yeah, this is uh, Matthew 2 and 13. It says, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of Yahweh, which was uh, Gabriel. By the way, Gabriel is a Hebrew word, Gabar Allah, which means warrior of the Most High. Okay? Or warrior of God, so you can understand. A pair of to Joseph, the uh, biological father of Yahawashai. Y Joseph is the Hebrew word Yahweh which means he will add. See, that's how we're going to start teaching, man. You know, a lot of you guys out there, you're faking it. You're, you're playing Israel, man. You know? In a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child, Yahawashai, and his mother, and flee into Egypt, which the actual word is Mizraim, all right? But they use the word Egypt, Egyptus, back then, because you why the Greeks had already took it over. So the people around there, they say, okay, that's Egypt. The Greeks renamed it, so we're going to call it Egypt now. So back then they understood when they said Egyptus, they knew that they were talking about Egypt because they changed the names. It says, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod, which was the Edomite, okay, will seek the young child to destroy him. 14, and when he rose, he took the young child and his, and his mother, the child's mother, by night and departed into Egypt. Now, why are they going to Egypt? We're going to find out why. And was there until the death of Herod, which is Herod the Great. That could be Don, Donald Trump in the reincarnation. <laughs> that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of Yahweh. By the prophet, what prophet in particular? Hosea. All right? Saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. So when, when it says, out of Egypt have I called my son, it ain't talking about that means Jesus, <laughs> sweet Jesus is an Egyptian. Yeah. No, because they fled down in Egypt. Now, why did they go to Egypt? Because there's a lot of white people down there? Yeah, I got an account for you, um. Something I read earlier about the Septuagint. The Septuagint was presumably made for the Jewish community in Egypt when Greek was the common language. So that's one answer right there. You had a large. That's why you had Israelites that were called Grecians and Greeks. Yeah. You know? Timothy Father was called a Greek. Yeah. This is uh, on the uh, Ptolemy, uh, Ptolemaic and Roman. All right, and this is from, let me go to the top of the page here. Let me go to the top of the page. Okay, this is, if you go to Wikipedia, it's history of the Jews in Egypt. Let me, cut, let me scroll back down. And I scroll back down to Ptolemaic and Roman, right? It says, Further waves of Jewish immigrants, which were Israelites, not Jewish. I don't know where they get the Jewish from. They were actual Jews. Uh, the Immigrants settled in Egypt during the Ptolemaic era. That was around 300 years before the birth of Yahweh Shai. All right? Especially around Alexandria. What, what, what was... Um, what was a famic, famous uh, landmark in Alexandria? The library. You had all kind of scholars from all over that, the, the, that area come and study there, man. Thus, their history in this period centered almost completely in Alexandria. Though daughter communities rose up in places like the present Kefir Ed Dura, 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 and Jews served in the administration as custodians of the river, 
as early as the third century BC, and I said that 300 years before the, the BC rep means uh, acronym for before the Christian era. One can speak of a widespread diaspora. Uh oh, G you know what I want? Isaiah, was that Isaiah 10? Of Jews in many Egyptian towns and cities. In Josephus history, it is claimed that after the first Tol uh, Ptolemy took Judea, he led some 120,000 Jews captives to Egypt from the areas of Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and Mount uh, Gerizim. With them, many other Jews attracted by the fertile soil and Ptolemy's liberality, they were free over there, you know, uh, em uh, emigrated there of their own account. In other words, they wanted to go there, you know, like Mexi Mexicans coming up here because of the money, because of the jobs, a better economy, mm -hmm. New Egypt. An inscription re recording a Jewish dedication of a synagogue to Ptolemy, because they were kissing Ptolemy's ass, and Bernice, Bernice, that's a famous person in history too, if you understand certain breakdowns, was uh, discovered in the 19th century near Alexandria. Uh, Josephus also claims that soon after, these 120,000 captives, Jews, were freed of their own, of their bondage, bondage Bondage by Philadelphus, that was uh, Ptolemy Sardis' son, or also known as uh, Ptolemy II. The history of the Alexandrian Jews, there's one famous one that you always go into, that Tiberius Alexander, Tiberius Julius Alexander, all right? The history of the uh, Alexandrian Jews dates from the foundation of the city by Alexander the Great, three, 332 BCE, before the Christian era, at which they were present. They were numerous from the very uh, outset, forming a notable portion of the city's population under Alexand Alexander's successors, the Ptolemies, Assign them a separate section. In other words, he said, okay, you're going to have, that's going to be your, that's where y'all going to live. Two, so they were at peace with, with the Ptolemy, Ptolemaic dynasty. Two of the five districts of the city to enable them to keep their laws. They kept their laws. That's why when you go to Acts, what is that? Acts, the, uh, was that the second chapter? Uh, they had, to, they had to devout men out of any, every nation because when they went to Greece, they went into other lands. But they kept the laws. And they, and they circumcised their children. And then when, 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 when the Passover came up, where did they go? They made their journey to Jerusalem. Okay, hold up. Let me get this back. Uh, okay, formed a notable portion of the city's population under Alexander's successors. The Ptolemies assigned them a separate section, two of the five districts of the city to enable them to keep their laws pure of indign indignant, what's that word? Indignatious, indig that's it, indig indigenous, I'm sorry, indigenous cult cultic, which means cult culture, influence. The Alexandrian Jews enjoyed a greater degree of political independence than elsewhere. So they had, they had freedom and they had liberty. While the Jewish population elsewhere throughout the latter Roman Empire frequently formed private societies for religious purposes or organized uh, cooperations of ethnic groups like the Egyptians and the Phoenician merchants which are Israelites, in the large commercial centers, 
those of the those of Alexandria constituted an independent political community side by side with that of the other ethnic groups. So that's the reason why the angel said go down to Egypt. Because you had, a, it said at the outset, when they first went into Egypt, there was 120,000. So Jake multiplies, man. So you had to have millions of Jakes down there with communities all over the place. So they fled among people that look, they didn't flee and hide among the, 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 the Egyptians. They fled and hid among their foreparents, man. Other Israelites, man. This is uh, first, uh, Second Maccabees 1 and 1. The brethren, the Jews that be at Jerusalem and in the land of Judea, wish unto the brethren, the Jews that are throughout Egypt, health and peace. You know, I got another one here. This is uh, Acts 6 and 9. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the, the uh, synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians and them of Cilicia and of Asia disputing with Stephen. You know, because you had Israelites all in those lands. Uh, this is Isaiah 11 and 10. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. That's dealing with Yahweh Shai. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. This is of the Israelite foreigners. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam excuse me, and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the island of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. You know, so Israel has been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, uh, beginning with Judah. I mean, all the tribes have been scattered. Yeah, and um, I had Taz Tariq, I showed the video that he said that the, the, the Moors and the Israelites are the same or the Moors and the Hebrews are the same, right? It says, I'm not going to read all this. There's a lot of reading here, but this is called, um, let me go to the top page again. Okay, this is from the uh, article from the Atlantic Black Star, and it's entitled, When Black Men Rule the World, Eight Things the Moors uh, Brought to, to Europe. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Okay, I'll go there. Universal education. Is that the Moors brought enormous learning to Spain? Remember, keep in mind, the, the Moors are Israelites, all right? According to what my man said, to Spain, that, o that, that over centuries would um, uh, per percolate, I'm sorry, percolate through the rest of Europe. It says the intellectual achievements of the Moors in Spain had a lasting effect. Education was universal in Moorish Spain. While in Christian Europe, now Christian Europe is talking about Jake because we were ruling Europe, but Esau came up in there. See, Esau started taking us down when, when Constantinople was sacked. That was in 1453. And the, 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 the man that was sitting on the throne was Constantine the 11th, uh, what's, what's his name? Uh, yeah, P, uh, uh, P, P o, if you look it up, Constantine 11. I think it's Pale, um, Paleo or Paleo Logos, which I believe means uh, ancient name or ancient, ancient word. Anyway, it says 90. Paleo, 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 Logos. Paleo, Paleo Logos, all right? It says 99% of the population was literate. I'm sorry, illiterate. So these Europeans, when they came into power, going back to time and chance happened after all, these, when these Edomites came into power, when they, when they broke from the chains of us, they were a bunch of dummies. So how did they get in the power seat? The Most High put them in that power seat. It says 99% uh, of the population, talking about them Edomites, was illiterate 
and even kings could not could could neither read nor write. Or oh, they said when um when you go into the history of Ferdinand and Isabella, when they both got married, they were to join uh, the two lands. I think it was Arag Aragon and Castile. They were bu they were bums. They didn't have nothing. The reason why they became rich, the Europeans became rich, because it's called the transfer of power. When they took down the original Christians, which was G, uh, uh, Jake, they took their riches, man. They went up in their castles and all that. And then when um, the armies took down the last stronghold, stronghold Granada in Spain, and uh, what was that, 1492, they took all their riches. Going back to the scripture in Ecclesiastes 9, Time and chance happen if to all, to all, not to all men, to all, right? It said just, be, the scriptures say, Lucy translated, it said just because a man has strength, that don't mean he's going to win the battle. Just because a man is wise, that don't mean he's going to get some bread. 